The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. The word that came to me as I was reflecting on these readings is the word holiness. Did you know anybody who is holy? What are their qualities? You know, when I think of holy people, I think of Mary. She was a very modest young girl. She was very quiet. She kept things to herself. She knew how to meditate and she had courage to say yes to God's rather challenging proposition to become pregnant without being married. In the realm of normal human beings, you know, my holy person is a priest at the seminary in New Orleans, Notre Dame. He's about 93. He's Irish from Boston. He has been a professor there. He has worked in Latin America in a bunch of places. He speaks Spanish very well. Uh, so I get along great with him. I've been going to him as a spiritual director for six years. You know, I think he weighs less than 100 pounds. And he is so alive, he is so knowledgeable, he is so steady, he is mature, he is experienced, he distills that peace that makes a penitent like me feel at ease and spill not the beans in my case, it's more like the big boulders that work 500 pounds. Don't know that you've ever had a 500 pound boulder inside of you, but some of us poor uh, creatures do. And the gospel tells us, in a way, the description of what a holy person is like. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What is it to be poor in spirit? It's to depend on God, to realize that your strength is God. It's the work of God, the presence of God within you, His Holy Spirit within you. Blessed are they who mourn. And to me this mourning has to do with perseverance because these holy people confront life with all its potholes. And they manage to surmount them and still maintain a very steady and a very confident attitude that regardless of the number of potholes they're going to get where they want to go, which is where God is. Blessed are the meek. Those are the people that are not like me, and they always say, yes, Father. Are you one of those people that says, yes, Father, the sky is red, yes, Father. Well, if that's what me, meek is like, I, I ain't it, you know? But to be meek is a good quality because you accept the authority of the person and you recognize the wisdom 
behind their recommendations and thus you let yourself be guided. You are the meek. Sheep are meek. They go with the shepherd, they follow the shepherd, and the shepherd keeps them safe. And then you have blessed are the merciful. God is merciful. And our call as Christians and as Catholics is to be merciful in, in turn. The last petition of the Our Father, forgive us as trespasses with the condition as we forgive those who trespass against us. Is it hard to do? Yes, especially when it comes to saying yes, Father, all the time to ideas that don't merit it. But that is the cross that I have to bear. So, the invitation to holiness is open to all of us, lay people, not just the priests, not just the spiritual directors of this world. You know, and then I want to talk to you about the prerogatives of working on yourself to become holy. That is what the St. Joseph, Cate Joseph Catechism used to no, the Baltimore Catechism used to tell us, you know, the purpose of our life is to pursue holiness, to love, to know, and to serve God. I never, that's what I heard it says, but I don't know because I never took the class. <laughs> but that's kind of a wonderful idea, to know, to love, and to serve God. So the prerogatives of being holy is to appear before God with a clean conscience. In the first reading today, we have the awesome scene from heaven, from the revelation of John. And he says that the holy were a vast multitude from every nation and every race and every people and every tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, and they wore this white robes, like the wedding garment that we hear about in another gospel. They were wearing the wedding garment because the church, triumphant in heaven, was being married to her bridegroom, Jesus the Christ. They cried out in a loud voice to the one seated on the throne, God, and to the Lamb. They prostrated themselves before the throne. They worshiped God and exclaimed, Amen, blessing, and glory, wisdom, and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes. And how have they made white their robes? How did they come to wear the wedding garment? It says, they made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So, how can we attain to wear the wedding garment, this white robe? And the word, the key word that should immediately come into our head is the word blood. We are baptized in the blood of Christ. The water is not just water, it symbolizes baptism, which cleanses not the dirt on the body. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, but it's the pledge of a good conscience towards God. And in baptism, we wash our robes, the robes of our heart, of our mind, and of our soul in the blood of Christ. And finally, this business, the motivation for pursuing holiness is nothing more than gratitude towards God. Because in the second reading, we are told that we are beloved. And the reason that we are beloved is that the Father has bestowed on us a love that has brought us to become children of God through baptism. Somehow we were born in a family who came to church. 
Somehow we came to know about God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and the saints that we celebrate today. All of it was very attractive. And we are gathered here in this vast multitude to do the same thing that the saints in this triumphant church that is wearing the white robes is doing. We are worshiping God. It is called coming to Mass. Coming to Mass is how we renew our desire, our purpose, our motivation to become holy through the forgiveness of our sins and through the partaking of the strength that Jesus the Christ imparts to us in the blessed sacrament of his body and blood. The challenge is indeed great, for we do not merit we are given, we are loved for who we are. And this sense of gratitude grows within us until the point that we can affirm, that we can say, yes, St. Paul, you are right when you say, everyone who has this hope based on Jesus makes himself pure as he is pure. We owe Jesus the desire, the motivation, and the endless work of becoming holy as he is holy. Amen.